not necessarily why we have a financial manager, but why is Mr. Early here in Flint, Michigan? And the reason we were told, according to our local paper, was that our former manager, Mike Brown, uh, could not continue in his position because uh, of a family situation. And uh, to that I give sympathy. Uh, however, according to the local paper uh, over in the last week, the fact of the matter is that Mr. Brown went back to his former company in Lansing, Michigan, and now, and now is leading the Flint Cultural Center on an interim basis. Now, I, I bring to your attention that the Flint Cultural Center purchased the property, the Sarvis Center, from the Flint Board of Education on a, on a no bid. They just kind of offered some money, and the Flint Board of Education said, sure, why not? I just don't understand what we're doing in this community. $100,000 to a company across the, hall, across the street here at the, at the county, and this was the same individual that came to city council here several years ago in that back room there, and he said we needed to build a Rutherford parking structure. And guess what? The Rutherford parking structure, we cannot afford it. Okay? I, I, I begged and pleaded with council not to back those bonds. But council did it. And guess what? The Downtown Development Authority, even after taking money from the parking meters and the parking tickets, still could not make enough money to pay for the bonds. So then what happened? The city of Flint had to pay for it. I mean, does it ever stop in our community? Does it ever stop? I mean, you can go back to all the world and before that. You can go back into the 60s about the, the, the pipeline. Now, the pipeline, we're not going to be able to sustain that pipeline. We hear about sustainability all the time. It's not going to happen. According to the master plan, which some people in this community think is the be-all and end-all of everything in this community, that master plan specifically states that between 2010 and 2020, this community is going to lose 20,000 people and 8,000 households. That means 20,000 people are going to be gone from this community. And 8,000 households, guess what? When those 20,000 people leave, they're not taking their homes with them. They're going to stay here. And that means 8,000 fewer homes will be buying water. That's like 8,000 people not paying for their water. And who's going to make that up? Raise your hand if you're staying. <laughs> I mean, let's be serious, folks. I talked to the leading officials on that KWA thing, and when they decided to put the KWA in, they did not even know how many people were First, receiving water so bills in the city of Flint. Thank you. So take your time this evening on your vote. Thank you very much. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mr. Paul Herring. Mr. Herring. Good evening, Council. Good evening, Mr. Herring. My name is Paul Herring, and I'm going to try to accomplish three things in the five minutes that I have. And I, I may talk fast, and I may get a little disjointed, but please bear with me. The first and most important thing I want to say is, Brother Early, I'm so glad you stayed. I am so glad he stayed to hear what we had to say, hey. and I'm impressed by that. Because he doesn't have to stay. He doesn't have to bring the thing that you're voting on to you. See, refuse to vote. Abstain from voting on it and see what happens. He can implement it without you guys. Okay, so this is a dog and pony show, and I like shows. <laughs> you know, it was, it, it was either this or the Housewives of Atlanta. I decided to watch this, all right? Record it. Record it. But now that Mr. Early's here, I would like to ask him a favor. You know, he's been here for a while, and we don't know what he does. You know, I would like to see Mr. Early once a month do a State of the City address. I'd like him to come up and say, listen, we fired three people from the uh, maintenance department and we jobbed it out to Owasso uh, Landscaping. I just want to hear those kind of things. I, I want to know that maybe he stopped people from using printer ink right. and he saved the city $20,000 right. doing that. I want to know that he hired somebody for $60,000 to go out to Arizona. 
right. and bring back these water, uh, desperately water-rich businesses to Flint to take care of this care of or take advantage of what we're doing with our water. Those are the kinds of things I want to hear. It's not going to all be good, and I don't want him to ask our permission. I just want him to tell us what he's doing. I want to know how you're saving us money, how you're making us money, and and that's really what I want to know. That's really what I want to know. So if you can consider that, I don't know if it's a memo or not. The other issue is Robert's Rules. Has there been an executive order to eliminate Robert's Rules? No. Then we need a parliamentarian, and I was going to suggest Peter Bade, because Eric, you aren't the one. You aren't the one. You just can't bring the message the way they need to hear it. But Brother Freeman, you know Robert's Rules. Brother Neely, you know Robert's Rules. And shame on the both of you for not standing up when the man was trying to do what was right. Amen. Eric can't always be the messenger. Eric rubs people the wrong way sometimes. But the rest of you can stand up. Mrs. Galloway, you are my new hero. (laughs) You put it to him. And he needs that. He needs that input. He needs to know what we're thinking. Vicky, you disappointed me. A plan without a plan is not a plan. You can't vote on something if you don't have the details, if you don't have the information. If you've got stuff coming next week, that's going to be able to make you do this irrelevant vote. Wait for it. If he don't want you to wait for it, he's going to pass it anyway. Amen. But it may be a long time before he brings anything else up here for you guys to look at. So you're on a tight rope here. Amen. You're on a tight rope. And you can lean to the left or you can lean to the right. But I'm encourage you guys to stay on track. Remember, <laughs> conflict is inevitable. It's going to happen. Right. Combat is optional. <laughs> okay? And in closing, in all things, purely social. <laughs> we need to be as separate as the fingers, y'all. And one like the hand, in all things beneficial to our mutual progress. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Pastor W.E. Whitaker. Pastor Whitaker. So would that make it two more? three. Three more after that. To the president of this council, to the council, to all who comprise this August assembly, to the clergy, to my brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's good to be here. I don't like being here, but I'm compelled to be here. (laughs) The reason why, because there's some things that bother me. You know, the Bible says to him that knoweth to do good and to do it not, to him it is sin. Other words, Peter Bain knows that aiding and abetting is a crime. Mr. Whitaker, please address the okay. council. Thank you. Okay. The things that we have passed as citizens, and then you violate it, that's a crime. Mm-hmm. To know the truth is a crime. Iniquity is to pervert or distort or to twist mm-hmm. all this flattery. You turn around and you don't know. <laughs> Wisdom has a twin called understanding. Yes. Mm-hmm. And when you don't understand something, then you don't move. Okay? Flattery is perversion. Flattery is a lie. It's a distortion. It's decorated. You can look like a politician. You can look like a preacher. You can sound like it oratorically. But being one thing and saying another is two things. Character is what you are. I know when you get paid, you go along with the person who's paying you. It's called selfishness. Look at the word sin, and in the middle of it is I. Look at the word pride, you find I. The biggest problem that one has is themselves. Most people don't know who they are, and they're trying to please the nine other persons out there, and I say that nine out of ten people are crazy. God made us with 13 to 14 billion neurons up here 
and you can have a brain and not have a mind. Even the elephant man said, am I not a person? I'm an individual. I don't care. That's my representative. I know that over in that area is $25 million that has been misappropriated down through the years. He comes up and says something, and what, the love of money is the root of all evil? Oh, $7,000, I put you on hold. I have you in a holding pattern. If you want to settle something, you've got to have more than one meeting and give it each one of us five minutes. Amen. You are supposed to be working for us. Amen. He is appointed. Amen. I voted for him. We vote in this community. Why was the five, oh, it was supposed to be 48 or 49 uh, EM, emergency managers. Why did they target the five black? Because it was 49%. Look at the internet. Look at your information. Look at him. Didn't he help to sell that down there for $8 million? Wasn't he on it? The politics. 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 <laughs> That's all I have to say. And then the water comes through here, and they get three glasses of water out there to our one. Something's wrong with this. I understand ethnocentric law, that there's a different rules in Flint and in, in Wassel and all that. Why is it that they pay less? Yeah, all of us pay more in the black community. Why? Because we are not looked upon as being human. I want you to know. I'm all human, I'm all man. You don't, hey, I get tired of your game, but I have to understand the enemy. Who don't want to hear? This is nothing new. This has all been all the time. The people get at the top to try to rule the ones at the bottom. They get expense. What? Last year, 4% of us lost for businesses, and, to, and the rich got 28% richer. What does that give Thank you. Don't give up, Pastor. Hang in there. Just hang in there. Our, ne our next speaker, Madam Clark. Our next speaker is Mr. Alonzo Price. Mr. Price? Two more after this. Yeah, two more. Two more. My name is Alonzo Price, and I live in the uh, first, first and second ward. I just want to... I just want to thank the Lord for all these witnesses. Amen. Every, every time I would come here, all we would come here, and I would have to get kind of upset a little bit and kind of talk a little hard. And now we got Mays. He does the same thing. Y'all kind of don't understand him. We all got together and voted for him to be here for a reason. We understand it's going to take time. We, want, we expect it for y'all to work together. We want to see Amen. can work together. Sometimes uh, you be tested. You know, we got a lot of people now, believers coming up, speaking the truth. We know what's going on. It was one time I sit here, it wasn't even enough people to come down here. But then we keep the meetings so long. I said that address, to Address the city council. Yeah, I said right. that, okay, I am addressing the council. I might look yeah, back. Right. I might look back because I'd rather look back at the believers than just look up here. Okay. I'm sad to, to come in here every time and hear fussing and cussing and everything going on. Last week we heard some stuff that was, I mean, that was really crazy. You know what I'm saying? Then every time Eric Mays want to say something, you know, ain't nothing going right. But it's a reason for everything. And I just say, the preacher already spoke God's word. Y'all heard it. He spoke it. I'm a witness to it. And all I'm going to do, sir, is pray for you. I know your hands are tied. Just like our mayor, his hands are tied. And I want to say this to the city of Flint as I address this issue. I don't think Mr. Wally don't know what he know, know how to run this city. I think he do know how to run this city. And I think there's a lot of politicians that's going on. And you want the young people to, to stand up. I told y'all before, they're not going to stand up. They're not going to come down here because they don't have no belief in y'all. They barely have belief in their parents and, and us that's telling them the truth. Then they see evil and good fighting against each other right down here. It scares them. We got young men getting locked up, beat up, killed on the street daily. And nobody t saying nothing about it. You know, we don't mind the police coming and doing a job, but we got some police that evil and good. That's right. All I see is my color, me, getting j jumped on, beat up, and hurt. Right. I don't have no problem about you getting the guns off the street, the drugs off the street. Right. We asked for that. But we didn't ask for you to kill our people in the wrong way. Right. We didn't ask for that. We didn't ask for that. But we are going to pray for you because the Bible says pray for those that's in authority. So I'm praying for the mayor and I'm praying for the emergency manager. And I know he's going to do what's right because we're going to pray. 
We don't have to vote him out, but we can pray him out. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, <Lando>. <laughs> <laughs> our, our next, <clears throat> Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Mrs. Barbara Griffiths Wilson. Mrs. Barbara Griffiths Wilson. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Barbara Griffith Wilson, and I'm a community advocate. Um, I've heard a lot of things here tonight, and some I agree with. And some I don't agree with, and I've heard Mr. Early say some things that some of it I agree with and some of it I don't agree with. I do want to say that being an advocate uh, for my community and for the city of Flint, when Mr. Early came in, came back to Flint and came in, I, I um, tried to make an appointment to talk with him. I tried to make an appointment to talk with him. Um, I guess Mr. Early's been here like five, six, seven, eight months or so. And yet, I still can't get an, uh, uh, an appointment with him. But that's OK, I don't. I charge it to his heart, not to his heart, but to his mind, and that he's very busy. But I want to say that I heard the seven-point plan, and I know that you must have a plan <laughs> to go forward. And I know that there must, be a, there must be an agreement to the plan. I'm asking my city councilwoman to vote to postpone tonight. Um, I believe that it should be postponed because if Mr. Early really says that we, he doesn't need you guys, then it means that he can do whatever he wants to do without you. He can do what he decides he wants to do without you. But I always keep it in my mind that Mr. Early is not a bad person. Mr. Early simply works for a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Early works for, for Governor Snyder. That's his boss, and he has to do what he's told to do as far as what his assignment goes. So I don't really charge it to Mr. Early. I charge it to Snyder. I understand that every city that Snyder has, sent, has taken over has not prospered. The people have not prospered. They've been taxed and overtaxed, taxation with no representation. It is, mis it is not Mr. Early's fault. It is Snyder's fault. And understand that the money that's leaving, some of the money that's leaving here is going into his war chest. He has more money than anybody that I've ever heard of <laughs> running for office in the state of Michigan. <laughs> and he is going to run for re-election. You got to understand that. But it is, it is up to us to go to the poll and vote him out. Amen. We got to stop Ajax and Huckabuck and talking about stuff that we're not going to do. We need to vote this man out of office. This man believes with all his heart that we're not going to vote him out of office. This man believes with all his heart that we're going to vote him back into office. He believes that. That's why he has all that money behind him. This man is destroying the cities in the state of Michigan. He's destroying the school system. That was, what, that was his mandate when he left out of Washington to come down here because he'd go up to Washington and talk to the people that tell him what to do, too. The, the, the Congress and the senators are his bosses. And the lobbyists, they're his bosses. So this man believes that he can come down here and, and sell up everything that we have owned. Amen. I am so, I'm, I'm upset about a lot of different things. Right. One of the things that I'm upset about is the fact that I live in an area where there's a park, it's called Brennan Park, Brennan Elm Park. Right. Mr. Brown, as the, as the emergency manager, after I talked to the DNA for about six months and they told me it couldn't happen, Mr. Brown made an agreement with the food bank. Now, don't get me wrong. The food bank is a good thing. I used to be a liaison before, before church, for churches between the food bank. It's a good thing. It feeds people. The food's a little outdated, and you got to pay so many, so many dollars per pound or so many cents per pound. But the thing is this. Mr. Brown convinced the governor or somebody in Lansing that it was perfectly okay for them to sell 3.5 acres of Brennan Park to the food bank. And when I raised up my head with other citizens and said, how many jobs will this center, because they're getting ready to kick this center off this week, how many jobs will this center provide for the citizens of Flint? At that time, Mr. Kerr told me they weren't in that business. I said, there's a playground out there that sits right next to the train station. Barbara, please sum up. 
can we get you to at least move the playground? He said he wasn't in the playground business. But yet he's in the business of taking over parks. We have a plan for our park. We did what they said was, a, we did a, a neighborhood plan, neighborhood stabilization. And they still ignored what we said. I don't understand why people, how people can continue to stand up for what's wrong instead of standing up for what's right. My thing, my last thing is, Mr. Early, I hope I get an appointment with you. I really do want to talk to you. I want to talk to you about the citizens that suffer the most in this city. I want to say also, when my water was frozen and, you, and, and, and there was plenty of help to get it unfrozen, my water has been running. That was over a month ago. Barbara, please. My water's still running 24 hours a day. So I know that's a lot of water. That's a lot of money. Thank you. Also, Mr. Early, my last thing is, would you please allow city council to meet more than once a month? Please. Our final speaker for this evening, Madam Clerk. Our last speaker is Mrs. Rosie Grass. Mrs. Grass. Mrs. Graff. Oh, here she comes. Hello. Good evening. My name is Rosie Grass. I'm a resident of Flint. I'd like to say hello to the panel. On the thing, I live in the seventh ward in the Flint area. I'm here tonight because I am being harassed, stalked, and I can't get any one, any, especially the police department, for one. They are here to serve and protect. I can't get any help. I can't rest at home. I have a stalker at my house every day. It seems like they don't understand exactly what I'm going through, what, I'm, what, what is going on at my house. I am being tormented every day. I have talked to all the officials in the city. I talked to the mayor. I have been everywhere trying to get the police or get somebody to help get this man away from my house. It's two neighbors. I, this has been going on for the last two years and a half. I am tired. I am a law-abiding citizen. I do not bother anybody. But it seems that I am being ignored. The police pretend they don't understand. They haven't tried to come out to try to catch this man. And I am tired today. I need some help. I cannot rest in my house. I cannot rest in this city. When I'm driving down the street, this one particular neighbor got some type of spray. I don't know what it is, but it comes through cars. It comes through the roof of my house. And I am not crazy. And I want y'all to know this. P please, please help me. Get somebody out there. Get the police to, to stop ignoring me and get something done. I talked to Eric. He knows all about it. I talked to um, the, the councilman lady about this. I am tired. I'm, in the, I'm like... Everybody's attacking me. I'm not crazy. That's number one I want you to understand. But I need this help from the police department. I have the civil rights working with me right now. The police are still ignoring me. 
I cause them out there. I understand when that person is up there <clears throat> that he runs and he gets out of sight. When they leave, he's back up there. And I am tired of, I have cameras. They don't throw every last one of my cameras up. He done broke into my house. I had to get a broken lung system going on. He's messing with everything around him, told my fences down, everything. And I need some help today. I'm tired of going through this, being sprayed in my head. It done got to the place of been three years, going on three years, where this stuff has been circulating around to other people done got a hold to whatever this stuff is and spraying please, in my head. Please sum up. Pardon me? Sum up. Your five minutes are up. Yeah, okay, I'm going to sum it up. Okay. My, my the summing this up, please talk to the police or somebody to get something going at my house to stop this man from being on my roof and around my house harassing me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that concludes our speakers for this evening. Before I move forward, I, I do want for the audience and my colleagues, I want to read um, Emergency Manager Directive Number 8. I just want to make sure council members and the audience knows that this is the directive from the Emergency Manager. On March 5th, 2014, Emergency Manager Darnell Early issued Emergency Manager Order Number 8, Council Meetings Protocol. The order is for the purpose of ensuring that council meetings are conducted in an orderly, dignified, and efficient manner, reflecting the level of professionalism deserved by council members, city officials, and staff, and members of the public who sacrifice their free time to attend these meetings. Effective immediately at meetings of the Flint City Council, each council member shall be afforded five minutes to address matters pending before the council, to make referrals to respond to public comment, or to discuss issues concerning the city of Flint. Council members shall not yield time to fellow council members. The period for council members' comment shall appear on the agenda, which it does. The city clerk shall keep time and shall issue a warning when a member has one minute remaining to speak. Otherwise, council members shall not make comments during council meetings other than to respond when recognized by the council president and limit comment discussion or debate to the five minutes. So with that. Mr. President. Just let me finish, Mr. Mason, and then I'll call on you. We have no licenses for approval this evening. We have no bonds to issue for approval this evening. It brings us now to the resolutions. In resolution 140110.1 is now properly before us, Mr. Mays. Yeah, Mr. President, I call you at the time that you read emergency manager order number eight, and then I'm going to leave that alone and go to where we should be. The reason I said, Mr. President, because I want to make sure that people heard that order. The order said also not only five minutes, but when the council president recognizes us. Now, that's a procedure under Robert's rules that you say, Mr. Chairman and Mr. President. This order doesn't change that. Those who were here earlier seen something when I say, Mr. President. A good chair will stop and recognize a member. And so that's all I'm getting at. That order, I hope the president ain't reading it wrong from what I've experienced here today. I've been ruled out order three times, so he chose to read it. I said, Mr. President, to speak on it. I've spoke on it, and I'm saying to my colleagues, some people spoke on that. 
We've got to help each other when it comes to Robert Rules. A chair is a chair, and Robert's rules dictate how we appear and act in public.